Welcome to today's round table. We're so excited to have our very special guests in the house. I will keep you. I would just like to say that it's, a, it's certainly an honor and a privilege to have such quality of our conversations going on today at the round table. And in a minute or two, we'll have our president give his remarks. And thank you to our moderators, uh, Ms. Rinu and Mr. Brown. We're looking forward to a very exciting time ahead. But just to take one second of your time, as you may know, we have just recently lost a patron and a former president. Uh, therefore, all our events for the next 30 days will observe a very brief moment of silence. His name is uh, Prince Adefolu MFR. Like I mentioned earlier, he was the past president of the NBCC and a patron, a very highly regarded gentleman. Can we please observe a very brief moment of silence? Thank you. May his soul rest in peace and thank you for your time. So once again, welcome Mr. President and Chairman of Council, Mr. Ria Tali, our patrons, our members of EXCO, members of Council, all our invited guests and all the members of the NBCC. Welcome to this event. I will hand over now to our President to make his remarks. Mr. President, sir. Uh, forgive me, prior to that, we'll have the national anthems, both the Nigerian anthem and the British anthem. Thank you. Morning to everyone and welcome warmly to the Nigeria British Chamber of Commerce Advocacy Roundtable. And um, today's theme, Reimagining 
potential and opportunities for trade and investment in Nigeria today. I'm sure you would all agree with me, it's an apt subject um, for the moment. We have our high esteem panel of seasoned um, speakers who we've been able to pull together for your benefits um, this morning. Um, please participate in the discussions by sharing your um, posting your um, questions and your comments on the platform. We'll do our best to collate and um, direct the questions appropriately and respond. Um, the, 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 this whole session is being recorded and it will be shared on the Nigeria Bridge Chamber of Commerce website. Once again, welcome. We've got quite a few um, participants already on the call. I'd like to invite our um, president, Mr. Ray Atelli, to please give his welcome address um, so that we can move swiftly into the session. Thank you. Have we got um, our president in the room? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Excellent. Thank you. There's a slight echo. Yes. Um, I think it's as a result of the use of multiple devices. So we have to turn one off and uh, use just one. Is that better now? Much better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. The Honorable Minister of Trade and Investments, past President Patrons, Patrons, the Deputy President of our dear Chamber, Vice Presidents, Honorary Life Vice Presidents, Council Members, ESCO Members, distinguished panelists who will do justice to the day's uh, discussion participants from around the world, especially, I welcome members of our UK network, other members of the foremost bilateral chamber of commerce in Nigeria, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Nigeria is a country full of untapped potentials, richly blessed in human and natural resources. The country is a success story waiting to be written, and many have wondered when will this be? But I tell you, the time is now. And so today we have gathered to re-emerging re the potentials and opportunities for trade and investment in Nigeria. What are those opportunities that we have before us? I know that we have a panel that will help take us through this and do justice to it. But suffice it to say that there has been an uptick in confidence levels across the world when Nigeria is mentioned. And so what it means is that there are opportunities that we all need to tap into and to ensure that we use this to build confidence even more in this glorious country. Let me add once again by saying that every organization, every country would have challenges at some point, and we've had a fair share of that. But let us not, in frustration, forget that there are loads of opportunities that can help us navigate through our current challenges and to get to where we desire to be. It is not over until it is over. And it is not over until you give up on your nation. And I know that corporate Nigeria and members of this chamber are very optimistic about the opportunities that lie ahead. And so we have gathered this morning to rub minds and to identify those opportunities so that we all can fully partake in this new Nigeria that is being built. I thank you for the time you have taken to be with us this morning. 
And I hope that we all will benefit from the various opportunities that will be shared by our panel of experts. Thank you, and please enjoy your morning. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for that um, speech, um, Nigeria Untapped Potentials, a success story waiting to be rewritten. And on that note, um, we would like to sort of, I would kick off uh, today's um, session by introducing our um, panel. I'll start off with um, introducing Mr. John Humphrey, His Majesty's Trade Commissioner for Africa. Um, he's a seasoned um, administrator, has had various things with the Department of Business and Trade, um, and obviously worked as a, an accountant and in various other positions. What I'd also like to share is that he is a younger brother of Trinity House and was only recently a lay trustee of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapy. Welcome, Mr. John Humphrey, and thank you for accepting our invitation. I'd also introduce um, our own Honorable Minister, um, Dr. Nkiru Uzoka Anite, a Nigerian politician and medi medical um, doctor. She was actually, um, she is actually the Minister of Industry trade and investment in Nigeria. She took on the role last year um, under the new dispensation, having sort of had various things in the financial services industry. Thank you very much. And she's been represented um, this morning by Mr. Ghana, who is the head of trade, of the trade department within the ministry. We welcome you, Mr. Ghana. Thank you for joining. I also have in the room with us um, our amiable and very um, seasoned Dr. Mahmoud Hassan. He's been on one of our previous roundtables in the past. Um, Dr. Hassan is currently the Director of Trade and Exchange um, at the Central Bank of Nigeria. He's been in that position for a while. And um, prior to that, he and his and prior to that, he was um, the Director for Monetary Policy Department, again within the Central Bank. Um, he has been um, instrumental in various policy initiatives um, and sits on a whole host of um, international and regional boards. So welcome, Dr. Hassan. Thank you. I'd also finally like to introduce, um, on behalf of um, the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, um, Dr. Tayo Aduloju is the um, CEO, but he's been represented this morning by Dr. Olumuiwa Alaba. We welcome you. Mr. Olumuiwa Alaba is the head of trade at the Nigeria Economic Summit Group. Um, you would observe that we have selected um, experts in the, in, the, in, in the area of trade and investment to ensure that we get um, a perspective across um, board. Um, I will just um, sort of, um, just to ease us in, just to get, um, help us understand some of what we'll be expecting today. At some point, we would actually run a poll to help us um, get some data around views on trade and investment. Some of this information we will be sharing with the various um, regulators and, and, and uh, industry experts just to help begin to shape the conversation and the sector. So I will kick off with an opening and a softening question um, just to our panelists. And I will direct my first question um, actually to Dr. Hassan. So it is a news that the international trade has taken a beating in recent years, you know, recent, um, with things like tariffs are all on the up. America recently announcing the new steel against um, China. Nationalist um, protectionism seems to be the order of the day. What's your view on what's happening with global trade? Just a perspective, sir. Thank you. And that's to um, Dr. Hassan. Um, if we will unmute Dr. Hassan, thank you. Um, can I ask all the panelists to 
please put on their videos so that we can actually familiarize ourselves with their faces. On the bits uh, of the, the network, please can you repeat yourself? Okay, thank you very much. So okay, my question much. to you is just my a general question opening question. Just a general opening question. <sighs> Sorry, I seem to have an echo in the room. Excellent, that's been sorted. So it says in news that um, international trade um, has been taking a beating in recent years. In, in recent years, we know that tariffs are on the up in many countries. Uh, we recently had heard the announcement in America um, on new steel um, against China. And um, it, it just appears that the nationalist protectionism is up. I would like your perspective on global trade challenges, just your view of the world. All right, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, session. I'm always happy to participate in this um, because it gives us the country a platform to also uh, showcase uh, the policy measures we are taking to address some of the risk premiums that are built into our ability to play in the global space and also to attract uh, the needed foreign uh, direct or portfolio investment into the economy. So it's, it's very good and I commend you immensely for doing this. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a patriotic part to do this and your UK partners. Now, on we call it uh, uh, what do you call it? there's a name they call it at the World Bank. Um, is it like your economic fragmentation and this protectionism is becoming a cliche that is common to most uh, countries, not mostly emerging markets or developing economies, but even advanced economies, where you have these restrictions that are supposed to build against, you know, the openness or competitiveness or transparency that we see. Or what Lutio speaks about in terms of having you know, a fair playing field for all economies. Um, emerging market and developing economies go into this space because of the well, the immaturity of our economic space, the inability of us to compete uh, at a very fair or balanced stage with others. And so we just put those in place to grow up some certain sectors of the economy to be able to meet with those global standards and then play in that space. Yet yeah, we see it as a global decision. It's not, um, it's not something that uh, is, is, is the best practice, uh, but sometimes it's, it's, it's an act of necessity. Or from the Nigerian side, I think with, uh, with, uh, with the advocacy has played a lot in the sense that we've grown some of the sectors, our IT, city sectors can compete internationally some of our manufacturing sectors can also compete internationally we've opened the space for access to to the market um so protectionism is, is less in this space however uh they need to deepen the market and also deepen the trade uh channels is still uh, very in terms of the infrastructure and also the connectivity is also very uh, critical and a lot is going on among the interagencies in nigeria and other partners towards developing this space. So global trade post-COVID has improved significantly. Trade numbers pre-COVID were above 10%. Globally, that has dropped to less than 2% post-COVID. Uh, since 2023, we see that picking up to 3 4%. So we see improvement in that. And global trade is going to also drive global output growth. Uh, as flow numbers are, as we see inflation globally, we are seeing that also playing out in terms of the interconnectivity of, among economies. What we used to call disruptions have also started, uh, you know, moderating, and we see that also. You know, so I think generally uh, there are still headwinds. Positivity is also in the momentum in terms of improvement in global. I think I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting comments there. Um, you know, the um, geoeconomic fragmentation. Um, your perspective is that um, 
in spite of the global protectionism, we, we feel that it's less in the Nigeria space. So that's um, worthy of note. And that's obviously underpinned by global trade uh, increase post um, COVID. I'd like to direct the same question to you, John. Um, your perspective on, on the challenges with global trade and how um, the UK is responding to that. Thank you. Um, John, if you'd like to share your camera, share, share your video, and as well as um, respond. Thank you. So, um, thank, thank you, thank you, Anne, um, and thank you very much for having me here today to take part in this conversation. I hope everybody can, can hear me okay. Um, uh, just picking up on uh, Dr. Hassan's comment, um, I mean, I won't uh, talk more broadly about uh, trade and what's happening to trade generally, but, but there was a point about this point about fragmentation and increased protectionism. Um, the UK really is very committed to open trade, and I'm not sure if everybody is aware of it, but obviously uh, last year we launched the Developing Countries Trading Scheme, um, which provides access from Nigeria to the UK market on a tariff-free and quota-free access for fundamentally pretty much everything apart from uh, arms and weapons, um, which uh, you know, are always excluded from, from, from those sorts of schemes. I think one of the things that's really interesting about the developing countries trading scheme as well, it allows the creation of regional supply chains. Um, and uh, Dr. Hassan mentioned sort of, you know, you know, you need conditions, you need logistics, you need infrastructure and those sorts of things. One aspect that I think is very unique to Africa as a region is the, the lack of intra-regional trade, which is often value-added trade. Um, and so obviously um, the UK is trying to, trying to promote that. Um, so I'm optimistic as well. I mean, I think we've been through a very, very difficult time. I think we're still going through that very, very difficult time. Um, but I certainly am optimistic for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for that response. I can see that uh, Mr. Brown has posted uh, I hope people a link. Me. Everybody's the... frozen on the yes, screen. Yes, we I'm can afraid. hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, John, very clearly. Um, thanks for your response. And um, I see uh, Mr. Brown has posted a link um, just to the point you mentioned in terms of the the the, the open tariffs. Um, so that's very helpful. And I'm I'm, I'm glad you're optimistic about um, the future of. Um, um, trade and um, we will hopefully see less of protectionalism. Can I direct the, the same question to you, um, Dr. Um, Ghana, please? Thank you very much. Dr. Ghana representing um, Honourable Honor Minister. Thank you. Um, Dr. Ghana, are you able to on, um, put your video on and respond. Okay, uh, so. Are you, are you seeing me now? We, I can't, yeah, I can hear you. That's good, yeah, I can hear you. That's good, yeah, I can hear you. That's good. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, but I don't know whether I can uh, get somewhere to switch on my listen. That's another thing. Uh, all right, can I go on now? Yes. Hello? Are you yes, hearing me? Yes, please. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, uh, thank you for that question. That one is really a global one because uh, if you look at that uh, trade uh, protectionism is, is really less in Nigeria because Nigeria is a member of WTO and WTO rules are very clear uh, except on specific cases where um, in terms of uh, um, subsidy, in terms of uh, issues where you use to uh, guard, to protect uh, local industries and rest of them. Uh, because WTO rules are very clear where member country has to um, do in line with the rules and regulations. And therefore, protectionism, protectionism is not acceptable as far as WTO rules are concerned. And therefore, Nigeria being a member will not definitely uh, populate uh, that uh, uh, rule, except in a few cases to be able to um, uh, uh, to be able to uh, protect uh, local industries and also uh, where there are where there are dumping.